Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Shiban and I'm a second year medical student studying at King's College, London. So if you didn't already know, a major part of getting into medical school is the UCAT or the University Clinical Aptitude Test which is an entrance exam required by 33 different medical schools in the UK. This test has five sections and one of them is abstract reasoning. So abstract reasoning, what is it? It's basically testing your ability to sort of reason with visual stimuli so you get a lot of different patterns consisting of different shapes different colors different uh, sort of patterns and you have to deduce sort of correlations between these shapes and between these figures and you have to answer questions based on that it's one of the hardest sections in the UCAT especially because it's really time constrained at the same time there's a lot of scope to do really well on this and to really elevate your UCAT score but before we get into the video I want you to go check out my YouTube channel because I make videos about medical school and university so I make vlogs day in the life videos get into medical school videos like this one and videos with medical school advice so go check that out and if you like my channel if you think it's interesting if you think it's something you'd be into then hit that subscribe button and join me for a lot more right so let's come back to it abstract reasoning it's definitely one of the most difficult sections in the UCAT so the format is that you have 55 different questions and you have to answer those 55 questions in just 13 minutes. So that means you have to answer about four questions a minute on average, which is really difficult. Initially, when I began my UCAT preparation and started off doing some abstract reasoning questions, I would spend 10, 15 minutes on a single question and I couldn't figure out the answer. But with time and practice, I elevated my score in abstract reasoning from 450 or 500 out of 900 to 870 out of 900. And that was my best section on the UCAT. There were a bunch of key strategies that I used to get into this better position. So first of all, abstract reasoning has four different types of questions. That's something that's important to know. So you have type 1 questions. These are set A, set B or neither questions. So you're given two sets of figures, set A and set B. And then you're shown individual figures and you have to decide which set they belong to. Set A, set B or neither. The second type of question is a sequences and series question. So basically you're given four different figures one after the other and you basically have to find out how each figure is progressing what change is occurring in each consecutive figure and based on that you have to determine which shape comes next the third type of question we have is complete the statement questions so basically this is just kind of like an analogy it's like if this is this then what is this to something else so basically you have to figure out that one missing figure based on the relation between two other figures given to you. And lastly we have type 4 questions. These are a bit similar to type 1. They're basically looking at 4 or 5 different figures and determining which one belongs to a particular set. So once again you're given two sets, set A and set B. And then you're given sets of figures. And you have to determine out of all of these figures which one belongs to firstly set A, which one of these belongs to set B, and so on and so forth. Type 4 questions, once again, they're much easier to answer once you figure out the pattern in each of the sets. Now, how did I raise my score from 500 to 870? I haven't told you that yet, so let's talk about it right now. Well, the key is practice. That's probably not surprising. It's probably the answer you expected and it's probably not something very interesting. But what I can do is I can give you hope. So when I started out, I didn't have that many resources to help me. I didn't have that many resources to guide me. I had a lot of questions, but no one to tell me that, oh, you're going to get better at this. So I was quite unsure, but I stuck to it. I practiced a lot. I did a significant amount of abstract reasoning questions every day and slowly gradually I did see an improvement in my score 
and it's basically the fact that you start thinking in a certain way when you look at a set of figures and that way of thinking allows you to answer questions much faster and additionally you get used to seeing certain patterns and different types of sort of correlations and you start looking for those and you start recognizing them much quicker. So for abstract reasoning, just practice, 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 do as many questions as you can and it'll definitely benefit you. Another tip I'd give you is try and make a list of the type of patterns you see when you're answering questions. For example, you might see a pattern with size or with color or with symmetry or something like that. So just keep noting them down and make a long list of as many different types of patterns that you could look for and then each time you're doing a question and you're stuck on what the answer could be just scan through that list of sort of patterns that you've observed so far and it's likely that at least one will be applicable it's definitely useful when you're practicing in the final test you may not have enough time to sort of scan through that list every time but it'll become so instinctive that uh, you'll start sort of recognizing the patterns without having to think of each and every one. And uh, there's also um, a mnemonic that covers different types of patterns that could come up in abstract reasoning questions. I'm not quite sure what it was, but I will throw it up on the screen somewhere here for you to have a look. So that'll basically give you a start to your list of different patterns and then a pretty basic tip for abstract reasoning is always start with the simplest box because the simplest box with the fewest shapes the fewest colors the fewest differences it's probably easiest to recognize the pattern using that box so always start with the simplest box additionally i'd say prioritize type one and type four questions because if you can figure out the patterns for these questions you'll be able to answer multiple questions in a matter of seconds it takes the same amount of effort to figure out five type one or type four questions as it does to answer a single type two or type three question so definitely focus on type one and type four also, when it comes to guessing in abstract reasoning, now this is obviously a worst case scenario. You can't figure out the answer to a certain question. What do you do? You have to guess. So my suggestion would be when you're looking at a set and you're looking at the five questions underneath it, for example, a type one or type four question, guess all of them as the same thing. So all five as set B, set B, set B, set B, or set A, set A, set A, set A, because it's much more likely that you'll get two, at least two or three maybe correct if you guess the same answer again and again but if you guess random answers then it's very likely that you might get all of them wrong. Now I'm going to quickly run over some of the best resources to practice for abstract reasoning in my opinion. So you have Medify. Medify is genuinely the best in my opinion. It has so many different questions on abstract reasoning. It has a massive, massive question bank. And the difficulty on Medify is actually quite accurate when it comes to how difficult the deal you can test is. You also have Medic Portal, Kaplan, the official UCAT website, obviously that's a great one. And then you have the ISC Medical Textbook as well. Now that's really good because it gives good explanations and introductions to each section of the UCAT and it covers some important strategies in there as well. So now that I've covered speaking about everything in abstract reasoning, let's get to doing some questions because I, I don't think me sitting here and ranting on about how to do well in abstract reasoning will actually help you. but. It might actually help to run through my thought process in answering a couple of questions. So let's do that. Right, so have, let's have a look at some questions. Example, this one that we're looking at. So when we look at these sets, there are many things going on. You have triangles, you have arrows. The arrows are pointing in different directions. The, the uh, what do you call it? The triangles are of different colors, so it could be many different things. But the pattern that I've noticed here is that there's an odd number of um, arrows in set 
A and there's an even number of arrows in set B. That's the main sort of difference and another important thing with abstract reasoning is there can always be more than one difference. It, there doesn't have to be just one. So I could be missing something here, but I don't think I am. So let's have a look. So considering that it's the arrows, um, that's my hypothesis. Then this has one arrow, it should be set A. And basically each set does, each figure does have a triangle. That's, that's another important thing to know. Then this has an odd number, again, it should be set A. This has an even number, it should be set B. Um, this has an odd number, it should be set A. Odd number, uh, even number should be set B. But I feel like I definitely did miss something there because there was no needle questions. So like that's what I'm saying. It's been a really long time since I've done these questions. So you really have to be on it to know what's going on. It, I can tell that I'm out of practice. And then look here. So basically here, one important thing to note is in this question, that this little black figure in the corner, it's sort of revolving um, clockwise. So it's going from the top left corner to the top right, to the bottom right, to the bottom left. And then obviously the lines are alternating. So this one has lines, this one doesn't, this one does, this one doesn't. So we are obviously looking at one with a black square in the top left corner. So one of these two, and then obviously one with lines. And then another thing is the number of squares in the middle is increasing, but we don't really need that. So this should be B. So now if we look at the answers, yes, this is correct. The, these were correct, but I did get one of them wrong in this. And let's see why I got that one wrong. So basically my thing about the number of arrows, that was correct, or number of arrows. Okay, yeah, there we go. So when when all the arrows face the same direction, the white triangles outnumber the black triangles. Otherwise, black triangles outnumber the white triangles. And in the other one, there's an even number of arrows, but when all the arrows point in the same direction, the black triangles outnumber the white triangles and otherwise the white triangles outnumber the black triangles so it's very conditional and uh, what do you call it and you need to obviously look for conditional patterns so yes I found out that there's the whole odd even business in this thing with the arrows but I didn't figure out the conditional pattern which is for example when there's a certain number of, a number of arrows pointing in a certain direction that the number of certain colored triangles is dependent upon that so that's something i didn't figure out so with practice those are the kind of things you start noticing and you start looking for so uh, that's just a couple of questions but i hope it gave you a good idea of what it's like to go through sort of abstract reasoning and what a test sort of feels like and looks like Right, so I hope that was useful. I hope that sort of gave you a good understanding of abstract reasoning, what it requires, how to do well, and what your preparation for abstract reasoning is going to look like. And if you did, drop a like down below, hit that subscribe button, and uh, share the video with your friends, and leave any comments down below as well, asking me any questions or anything like that. And with that, I will see you in the next one.